So it's a little bit later in the morning on Tuesday, October 15th. It actually feels colder right now around 9.20 than it did at 7 a.m. this morning when I was out to check out LeVan Cookie. Um, so this is a phenomenon that I've noticed over the years, having uh, had to walk these streets, uh, you know, a million miles or ride my bike. I used to have a bike before I got hit too many times. I had a serious bike accident in 2012. Um, stitches in my face, my hands were a wreck, the whole nine yards. But anyway, um, the phenomenon is that you can come out like at five, six, seven in the morning and the temperature isn't as cold until later. It'll be like, oh, it feels okay. Then you come out later dressed, you know, appropriately. At least you think you're dressed appropriately. And then it's like, oh my God, it's freezing cold. What changed? Like it should be opposite, right? Like in the winter time, you would at least think, oh, it's cold overnight. And usually there's that freezing cold hour. Like you wake up at four in the morning, you're like, oh my God, it's freezing cold. Um, so what's going on in a city? I don't know if this happens elsewhere. I've noticed it here. What's going on in a city when it's actually colder at 9.30, 9.15, 9.20, 9.30, than it is at 7 a.m. on October 15th, a Tuesday. We even have tons of traffic. There must be something going on west of here to keep traffic back. Um, it might be trash day in a certain area. Um, but what's going on? I used to joke like, oh, did they, like the machine, you know, the metaphorical machine of life gets started, you know, probably 6.37, 8 o'clock. And does that, for some reason, does it like create wind? <laughs> <laughs> like a wind vine or whatever or like are there fans somewhere um, no, this way um, are there fans somewhere and they turn them on that's you know a little bit of a joke because oh look the Joker Phoenix um, but I do know it's chillier right now and there's a breeze and there wasn't a breeze at 7 a.m. this morning and it was actually milder so what is it even these people are chilly here oh, I don't know that Maybe the meteorologists and the weather forecasters know what that phenomenon is, like to have it feel colder in a city later in the morning than say 7 a.m., 9.30. Oops, there's a dead bird at Express Edit. So, um, what does it mean? Is it a death threat? So a lot of people walk around with phone cameras, regular cameras, and in a way, Philadelphia is the Van Cookie, which is where I was this morning at 7 a.m. Um, so, but in New York, you know, it's very normalized. Like everyone is filming. It's a very film-like city. Philly is kind of catching up to the New York, um, style you know we're a smaller city we're the fifth or sixth largest in the nation um in terms of downtown you know i don't know how they measure because philadelphia encompasses a very large region if you were to actually map it out but downtown is smaller it's it's large but it's you know when you really look at the parameters of philadelphia it goes way out into neighborhoods you know of people who probably rarely even come down here to downtown that they would have to really be in the mood or work here or whatever um so anyway lots of white cars out white 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 and black black so all here at verizon um, so anyway so i'm wondering if the bird is about the cookie shop um Everyone has an opinion about Levain. It's, you know, it's New York, Washington, D.C., but there's the Maryland, the Hamptons. Uh, the Hamptons are, you know, like a playground for the more wealthy of New York City and Manhattan. So they go out to the Hamptons in the summer, um, go to their house in the Hamptons, that kind of thing. So some people might see Levain as an extension of the government with the eagles, you know, holding the cookie, like their talons are in a friendly way. It almost, they almost look like doves holding a cookie, you know, but I have no clue, but it would be kind of a good guess, I guess. Um, a lot of 
companies, how do they survive? It's really hard to have family money or privatized entities in a liberal city, I guess, survive. So it seems the opposite, you know? But actually, it could be that liberals learned, I don't know, there's like 50 ways to debate this issue could only survive through certain rules, through a certain way because the privatization, the money of the wealthy, which is the right wing, were taking over communities before. So the government had to support people and help them, you know, live a higher quality life. You see what I mean? So it could go either way. Um, I don't know, I'm down here, you know, sort of listening to opinions from other people. Um, and I'm not a creature of the world of politics, nor heavily privatized entities. <laughs> I'm just a regular person out here, um, living like most people, you know, although, albeit I had an exceptional and very unusual situation happen to me. What is going on over here? Over at White Elephant, they have like a big, they ha I, is that a new patio or like, um, so they have a whole bunch of like almost looks like small tree trunks all bent over to create like the outdoor seating area i don't remember that for some reason but it's down there um so anyway um the white elephant used to be like it for many years it was like a buffet convenience store sort of like a chinese buffet you go in you could get a sandwich in the deli there's a lot of convenience you know you get your drink sodas in the refrigerator then it turned into Cinder, C-I-N-D-E-R. Um, and I started to wonder about its validity or why it was there or if it was a messaging situation. I happen to have a sister named Cindy. Um, so, and what's going on there? It happened also to be acro directly across from 1515 Locust, which is where I did many an overnight for people who have a permanent home in um, West Palm Beach and they you know as they got older they seasoned themselves out they became snowbirds and stuff like that um, my cousins grew up in West Palm Beach or North Palm but it's all the same you know we got like five miles difference um, so and my grandmother you know re lived in sort of retirement in Palm Beach Gardens which is a tad north of North Palm our grandfather you know, retired there with our grandmother, but died three weeks after retirement. So my grandmother lived there by herself. Uh, but anyway, so, ha but after Cinder, it was Bloom and it had a big gigantic pink monarch butterfly. So we have another look-alike. This has to do with a video I had earlier, LeVan Cookie. I ran into a fellow dog walker who I actually worked with for a while in 2012 and ele uh, like 2011, 12, 13, um, because I needed the extra work. I was, you know, suffering very badly from something that happened here. So I had my own dog walks, and then this woman who could resemble her a little, who happens to live right there. <laughs> um, so gang stalking could encompass a lot of lookalikes or people who are close enough in appearance that you wonder, and especially if they have three dogs and everything, like this person has three dogs and I would wonder, um, she doesn't